I uh, want to talk about your defense today. How would you kind of assess where it is in the job that Jerry's done with it? I think we're growing. Um, you know, I think we played really good run defense on the Cincinnati and the San Diego State game. Uh, not as much in the Oklahoma game. But a lot of times you got to also give credit to your opponent. You know, there, there is an explosive in offense as there is in the country. Um, we held them to 100 yards less than their average. And we didn't stop them at all. You know, so... You know, I think when you look at the combination of talent that Oklahoma has on the offensive side of the ball and the wideouts and the running backs and the quarterback is really a special player. Um, you know, you, you got to kind of give credit to them sometimes. So, um, we got to improve on our pass defense. Um, but I think our run defense, especially in the first two games, and I think in the, even in the San Diego State team, the team that's noted for running the football, we had that 1.7 or 1.9 on some carry. So, um, but we got to play both phases. So. We got to improve in the pass defense aspect of things. I mean, it'll be a big challenge this week playing Washington State, who does throw the football. Uh, you know, so that's kind of where we are right now. How much input do you have on the defensive side of the ball? I meet with those guys every week, just like I've always done. Um, but you know, one of the things we have is I think we have an outstanding defensive staff. With in like anything, it's not just one person. You know, it's not one person in the offensive side of the ball. It's not one person. You know, you have Jerry, you have Paul Rhodes, um, who's been a defense coordinator at uh, numerous Power Five stops and a head coach uh, in, the, in a Power Five school. Uh, Don Pellin's been a coordinator before. Vince Ogabasa came from the NFL and does an outstanding job. And then Jason Kafusi has really added a lot of depth to our staff. So um, when I meet, I meet with the staff. So uh, I think we all talk about, you know, I, I, what gives them, what gives these formations and things problems because I can speak from an offensive perspective. Um, but on game day, I don't weigh in and make calls. On it. And I've never had that. I never did it whether I was in the NFL or whether I was at Oregon. I don't chime in and, you know, because that's not my expertise. You hire people to because they're the experts at it and they do their job. So. You, you obviously knew what Jerry could do as a defensive line coach because he'd been with you so long. What mm -hmm. made you confident that he would be a good defensive coordinator? When you, when you look at some of the rankings of his total defenses at Duke and, and uh, UMass, they weren't, they no, weren't very good. And I didn't go back to the defense at UMass. But what year okay. was that? 94? That was 90, 94 and, and 99. 94. Yeah. I played good. against them actually in '94, and they were really good. We lost. They four. were in '94. We beat them 14 to. We beat them 14 to 11 in a hell of a defensive battle when I was yeah. at New Hampshire. They, so they were top 25 then. But at Duke, he was. Yeah, but I know you don't hire people in the rankings. You don't yeah, hire people okay. because of the type of teachers and the type of scheme. And it was the scheme we ran at Oregon that has had a real big input when we were at Oregon. It was the same thing. Nick Aliotti was our defensive corner. He did an unbelievable job. But our whole staff, whether it was Nick, Don Pelham, Jerry, John Neal, they all contribute. So it's not. It's not just one person. It's not like five guys think one way and then one guy says, this is what we're going to do. It's, it's a collaborative effort, and it's always been a collaborative effort. So um, that, that's always how it's, how it's been done. And he, had, he had great impact when, when we were um, at Oregon, and, and I've been around him for a long time. He's a hell of a football player, one of the best I've ever been around. What concerns you most about the Washington State offense? Well, I, I just think, you know, Mike's dedication to throwing the football. So that he's going to throw it no matter what, you know, whether – it's weather, whether it's 12 guys on the line of scrimmage, he doesn't care. You know, he's so dedicated to it, and I think they've run it for so long and done the things that they can make adjustments to whatever they've seen. I'm sure he's, in Mike's career, he's been defensed every which way. Well, rush one, rush 11. You know, he's seen it all, and I think he has answers to it because they, they do what they do, and that's the one thing about Mike, probably compared to everybody else, and even talk to the area guys, is the one pure air raid guy is Mike and one thing by doing it that way Mike has answers for whatever you throw at so it's still going to come down to individual battles you know how do how well do we cover their wideouts and how well does our, our defensive front generate pressure on their quarterback how well does their offensive line not allow us to generate pressure so it's still going to come down to that but I think their understanding of what they do because he's dedicated to just doing that um, you know it's impressive they, they they have the answers because they've seen it and he's seen it you got two, I believe you forced two turnovers in three games. I know part of that's what the other team is doing, but where, where does that... Where yeah, turnover, turnovers are huge. I mean, when you look at the statistic of winning the turnover battle, not winning the turnover battle. So when you win the turnover battle, the percentages for um, winning jump, and we, we've talked about that. You know, we have to create more turnovers on the defensive side of the ball, and we have to prevent them on the offensive side of the ball. You know, I think that's... Um, you know, every coach will tell you that the turnover battle is is a key statistic that, that everybody looks at immediately after the game. Where, where were we on turnover takeaway right there? And that's that's an indication. That and explosive plays, I think, are the two big things that, that we talk about a lot with our players is limiting their explosives, creating our explosives, um, limiting our turnovers, and creating turnovers for them. So.
How do you how do you generate more turnovers as a defense? I think we got to get to the ball better, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and run to the ball better. And I think gang tackling. Um, we have a turnover circuit every day that our guys work and, and get at. You know, sometimes if you get pressure on the quarterback, sometimes the turnover is a byproduct of a good rush. You know, the quarterback doesn't have time to set his feet, so he can't be as accurate with the throw. And if he's not as accurate with the throw, then it's a little bit errant pass. So now it's thrown more to the defensive back than it is to the receiver. So there's a there's a whole different component. And really, turnovers itself takes all 11 guys on defense. I tried to talk to Jerry because I'm writing about Jerry. I was told he was not available. Can you can you explain your your? Uh, I have no policy on that. You have no. You do not like allow your uh, assistants no, to be I've interviewed. Never had that. That's not me. So I that's mean, his decision. It's his. I, I, I would imagine. I, I, no one asked me about. But we've been requesting your assistance for two seasons now. I've not gotten one of them. So. Does that have anything to do with me? No. No. Okay. So that's All up right. to those guys. I don't. I don't have any restrictions. Just I don't have any restrictions on. I'm happy to talk to our players. That's up to. That's up to them on what they want to do. So I have zero restrictions. You made it clear that there's a there's a difference between what you're running here and at Oregon. Yeah. Uh, but tempo was a big element at, at uh, Oregon. How, mm-hmm. how important is it uh, with the screen, scheme you're running here? We're not we're not not a big tempo operation. I thought a lot of that comes from depth. You know, at Oregon you could probably play nine, ten receivers and roll them, and there wasn't a lot of difference between one to nine. You know, so I think it's everybody. You know, we want to play fast. Well, if you play fast, you have enough depth to play fast. You know what I mean? And so when you're a young team like we are with 87 freshmen and sophomores, we're still, the kids are still learning. You know, and we're still getting a lot of those kids up to speed in terms of what we're doing. So um, it's not fair to throw them in and try to win a whole full offense when they don't know the whole full offense. So um, tempo has not been a big factor for what we do um, with this group just based upon our youth. So that's, that's, that's part of the deal. So. Can you, your stance on, on deep commit. Do you still uh, recruit kids that say they're no longer committed uh, to you, somebody once they're committed? It depends on the, the we, we take every individual recruiting situation and sometimes kids are, uh, they have various reasons and then you, you just talk through and you, you have an open dialogue and a relationship with them about what the reasons are and you kind of go through that process with those guys in terms of what it is and then you, a lot of it is ask them or they, you know, just around us to continue to recruit Jerry for a year in a certain process, but there's not a hard and fast depending on this, this sequence list. It's always about the individual relationships that the coaching staff has with the player and the coach and the family and you know, how do you want recruiting to be like? Because I, I think that the input from the families are huge in terms of how do they want to be recruited. And that's, that's part of the, the process as you're learning um, what they're about and what they're looking for. And, and hopefully you can provide. How would you assess the job that your staff has done with player development since you've been here? I think our staff does a great job with player development. Can you give examples? Um, I've watched a lot of our kids become uh, grow as players since, since they've been here. And you see how they develop and and continue to get better on a daily basis. You know, the, the problem with a young team is that people want it from one day to the next day, and that's not human growth either. You know, growth happens over time, you know, and I think that's the unfortunate part you know, when you're playing sports is it's not going to be from one game to the next game. It may be over the course of a season. You know, I watched our team last year. We were better at the end of the year than we were at the beginning of the year, so that's a great example of development from the last week. So. Thank you. Thank you.